pieces of the puzzle that I've decided provides. There's 10 of them. Tools and resources are two of them. We're a source of information, a source of motivation, a resource for the people that might need a little bit of encouragement. If this show, The Source, can, can help our members do that, I'm all in and yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody. We are here live in downtown Peoria at the Widecast Studios. Welcome to the December edition of our vodcast, The Source. I'm your host, Kurt P. White, and I'm happy to be here today with all of you this uh, wonderful week where we're celebrating Christmas and all coming together. Hopefully you've got all your your gifts purchased or you got to get that last minute shopping in based on the forecast. You might want to do that today. But uh, anyway, thank you for joining us this holiday week. And I'm excited to have in the studio with me today my guest, Mr. Dean Hefta. Dean, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. Dean and I, uh, we've had the, the pleasure of working on a few projects with I've decided here over the last couple of years, and I know Dean's been a member uh, at least as long as I have, maybe a little bit more with, with I've decided, but uh, runs into, has his own business, Claris. He's a great motivational speaker, keynote speaker. Uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm thrilled to have you here today, and we're going to have a bit of a conversation this holiday week about the weekly winning word, as we always do here on The Source, and that word this week is envision. So with that being said, Dean, uh, if you want to maybe just a second introduce yourself and then tell me a little bit about what you think when you hear that word envision. Sure. Yeah, so thanks for having me, Kurt. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I do training on communication skills, uh, leadership development, facilitate strategic conversations and one-on-one -on -one coaching for people that are looking for uh, getting more clarity on, mm -hmm. on what they're trying to accomplish. And so I'm excited to have the conversation with you today and you know, when you think about a word like envision, it um, it has a lot of applications, mm -hmm. I think. You know, so this is the time of year when we start looking out ahead again, which right. really we always should be looking out ahead, but we're looking out ahead mm -hmm. as everybody is right now. And partly that can be where we're dreaming of the things that we want. But when we move into that envisioning, I think it gets a lot more concrete. We begin to shape things up in our mind's eye. What is it that we want to to pursue, mm -hmm. and then that begins for me to inform what is it we need to do on a daily basis to bring that to life. Absolutely, yeah. There's, uh, you know, the sense of reality kind of sets in, and that's an interesting point where we differentiate a little bit between dreams and envisioning. Um, you know, we're dreaming. Uh, we even have it here. I was going to read it for you to remember. Envisioning is different than dreaming. When you dream. You're making up scenarios based on hopes and desires. But when you envision, you're imagining the reality of your future self based on the decisions that you're making today. Mm -hmm. And so there, that is spot on with what you're saying. And, and also the fact that envisioning is always implies or, or requires that you're looking towards the future. You can't really envision your past, right. <laughs> you know. That's a good so point. where dream, dreams are something that you you know you can always dream about your childhood or whatever you know time frame, but envisioning requires a look into the future, and I think we can all agree, uh, based on the some of the the happenings of 2020, <laughs> and uh, how that's affected our lives in so many ways. Uh, I personally, uh, I'm very blessed and grateful. Uh, you know, have not had any major health issues, uh, but I do know people that have, so I, I'm grateful in that respect. But like everybody else, uh, and I'm imagining you're, you also, uh, I'm envisioning a better year for next year. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, th that is a, an interesting thing to think about because um, when we envision our next year, mm -hmm. um, I think there's two paths we can take. One is how much of that is our responsibility mm -hmm. that we have control over for what we end up creating towards our vision versus maybe the optimism where we hope that things are better, you know, 
with the virus or with business or things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think those are two very distinct approaches. On one, you're on the second one, you're waiting and hoping right. that things work out. Or more so dreaming. Yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. The other one says, regardless of what's going on with the world of economics, with the world of the virus, with anything else, I have a vision that I can pursue mm -hmm. because I have the ability to bring things about on how I choose to do my day-to-day -to -day towards that vision. And I think that's where envisioning has to be coupled to what are the things that I can do on a daily basis to bring it to life, mm -hmm. whereas the dream has some detachment. We're just hoping that someday this <laughs> dream comes true. We hear these phrases like, right. my dreams came true, mm -hmm. as if it was some magical thing that occurred. Mm -hmm. No, it's, again, you're right on it. In order to properly practice or, uh, you know, flexing that muscle per se and, and envisioning to see ourselves in the future, it, it takes action. It takes something on our part to to make all of it become a reality of what we see. We can't just sit back and expect things to happen or hope for them to happen. Um, another thing that, that came to mind and I wanted to share it with you also is the when you look into the future as far as envisioning is concerned, you can apply a time frame of any length of time you know, for example, the extreme of my hope and prayer for eternal life, you know, envisioning what that ultimate goal is going to be, to as minute as the, the example that I hear a lot when you talk about envisioning is in the sports world or some of my experiences that I've had. Uh, let's just take playing golf for an example. Uh, that whole pre pre-game warm up or you you know what you mentally do before you actually address and, and hit the ball you envision the shot you envision where where do you want to aim where the ball is going to go and you have to take into consideration all different kinds of things you know the lie the distance the wind all those but but the the gratification or the result is much more immediate than the other extreme of you know life everlasting mm -hmm. so when you think about that and, and you kind of apply a time frame to it, you know, what, what are your thoughts there when you look at the word envision? Well, I think that's an important concept when we think about time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use the uh, illustration of zoom in, zoom out, just like on a camera lens. I've heard you say this before. You know? yep. mm -hmm. And the, the, the bigger the thing that, is, that we're working on, or maybe the greater the responsibility that we have in an organization or that we're trying to achieve, the further out in time we zoom out to look at. Like it's a bigger picture view mm -hmm. over the course of more time that we're going to envision. And then we also have that responsibility to zoom back down and say, okay, well, what can I do today? Mm -hmm. And I can envision how my day is going to go. And I, I love the illustration of your golf swing or the free throw shot. Mm -hmm. um, that is like our day. How am I going to envision what my day is going to look like as it relates to this championship season that I'm pursuing or things like that. So mm -hmm. we have this opportunity and maybe even responsibility to be able to zoom out, mm -hmm. to see that further out, bigger picture, and then zoom in and say, okay, so what are the little steps that I'm going to take? What's the one little thing that I can do right now? What's this thing that I can make use of today for? Because it's the, the collection of all those little things right. that really then manifest that vision that we have in our mind. And if you think about those little steps and, and, and relating it to like we do with everything here at I've Decided is, you know, our mission is your success. We want you to be successful in those steps that you're taking. You know, there's no question, and you hear it all the time, uh, the, the, the elite athletes, uh, those that have really been able to use their power of envisioning that, developing that mental picture in their mind of, making the free throw shot, sinking the putt, uh, crossing the finish line first. You know, those are the people that tend to be most successful. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and it's proven, you know, even practicing uh, free throws in my mind mm -hmm. will improve my accuracy. Mm -hmm. So there's an amazing impact that our mind has, and so we have to be real stewards of what are the types of things that we think about. If we're consumed by envisioning how something's not going to go well mm -hmm. or how it's going to be a failure, mm -hmm. 
it's really miraculous about how we can bring that about too. So we have to be really um, aware of the things that we are envisioning mm -hmm. because so much comes behind that. Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. I mean, how the pieces fit together, the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis ends up collecting into these big things that come to pass. And it's amazing how fast time disappears. <laughs> and so how do we how do we take advantage of each of those little things that we that right. we do? Well, making the most of it. And as you alluded to earlier, the, you know, take responsibility for our own actions and, and, and practice that whole – because, again, it, if you really be intentional and sit down and figure, how, how can I see this in my mind ahead of time, I think you're going to be surprised with the results. And uh, our, our weekly winning article – I wanted to just hit a couple of the points. Where there are four of them, if we can get to all four here. But um, I think G Kim did a great job, and these are four reasons why envisioning will help you create the future that you desire. And the very first point she made goes right in line with your business and kind of what you talked about. You like to help people bring about clarity. Um, the power of envisionment does help you gain clarity is that true absolutely and so often I think we get cluttered in our thinking mm -hmm. and people will even say things like oh, I just I'm having a hard time visualizing it or picturing it or seeing this mm -hmm. and it, it, when we think about it one of the things that I teach is related to improving communication and the model is called process communication model that I use and what it found what the research found was we have inside of us six different perceptions of how we perceive the world. Mm -hmm. And one of those is um, our ability to reflect and imagine. That's, that's one of those ways that we interact with the world. But for many of us, we don't use that a lot. But it is a part of who we are. And so I think finding time to just quiet ourselves and think about what could be and what we really want right. is a way of exercising that muscle. It, Maybe yeah. it's for 10 minutes to start with, mm -hmm. and then maybe that grows and we get more and more clear. Mm -hmm. That's an important practice that we can put to work. Yeah. Well, and I love that, the, the whole idea of perception and the different ways that you can look at things. And just recently, I sat in on a, a presentation that you did where I think you gave a pretty neat example. Uh, it was regarding uh, doing presentations in a digital age or you know, over at, well, of course, everybody I think is familiar with the Zoom platform nowadays. But uh, your point was well taken is, you know, you really kind of got to envision that person that's watching you do your presentation. What do they see? Do they see somebody that, do they see a professional who knows what they're talking about, who's coming across an, as an expert in the field? Or are they seeing somebody <laughs> who just rolled out of bed and, you know, you're wondering what kind of clothes they have on from here <laughs> below, and their hair's all disheveled, and the, you know the, you know, the hard telling what the background is. Mm -hmm. You got to be cognizant of that, take that all into consideration, and, and think about how are other people perceiving what you're doing. Well, and you raise a point that I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a friend of mine on a mastermind call this last weekend, he said he recently had this past year went to work for a major consulting firm. And he said one of the most important things that he had done prior to doing that was he had a professional headshot. Yeah. And he put it on his LinkedIn profile and his other profiles. And he said that gave the other people in the company a very specific vision, mm -hmm. a, a very specific picture of him. Right. And he said it actually helped him to establish more credibility because of the vision they had in their mind. Sure. Of him as a professional, which I think is something to, to consider, whether it is how we how we show up on a, our little Zoom <laughs> box or the mm -hmm. little picture, you know, on our LinkedIn profile. Yeah. That is a, a way that we're now helping other people mm -hmm. envision who we are. Right. You even mentioned, though, simple things that we can uh, make a small investment that can vastly improve what people's vision of us is, for example – uh, buying a, 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 a microphone. Uh, don't just rely on the one in, in, in your iPhone or uh, even the lighting and the shadows and those types of things. Just I, Didn't you say you built your lights? I <laughs> did. I did. Build right. them yourself. Just be creative, right? Mm -hmm. And just adjust your position. So 
you know, if you can get the, the camera at eye level, it's giving people a different vision of you. Mm -hmm. It seems more like you're having dialogue with somebody. Absolutely. Um, I also want to just tag on at the end there, you know, the, the whole idea of clarity. That's something personally that I pray for mm -hmm. on a daily basis um, because – like you said, I think, and what you mentioned is kind of one of those aha moments for me is, you know, I think what I'm praying for is let this clutter get out of the way and let me see what it, what truly my path is supposed to be and how I can serve others to the best of my ability. So I think, you know, for me, that's a big part of envisioning who I am and what I want to do for the future. Um, that comes to mind when I think about clarity and finding it. And sometimes when we simplify our environment, mm -hmm. whether it's our room, our home, our office, or even our tasks, it helps us to simplify our ability to see things in our mind. Mm -hmm. So there's power of simplification. The last one, I'm going to skip a couple. The last point she made is, uh, you know, focusing on the, the power of envision creates a mental snapshot and gives you a visual image that you can imagine which I think we kind of pointed, you know, we hit on that earlier in the conversation. Uh, are there any other examples that you'd want to share? Or, you know, if you're going to look at the question of, you know, Dean, what kind of mental picture, what would you suggest I need to work on to, to help assure that, you know, I'm going to start out 2021 and, and have a more successful year than what 20, 2020 has proven to be? I think a couple of things that can help us to enrich our um, what we envision is things like uh, who are we doing this for? Like who will be impacted in a positive way mm -hmm. if we pursue this vision? And we're willing to take on more pain uh, when we realize we're, we're doing it to help others. Mm -hmm. So bringing the people that are going to be impacted into it. Mm -hmm. um, I envisioning how am I going to feel? Right. when this comes about, when I achieve this thing, and bringing ourselves into that future emotional state as well. Yeah. Kim's, I'm sure you've heard it, the emotion follows the action. She she's says that repeatedly. So and I think the interesting point there too is how are you going to feel uh, if you put yourself in that place and, and what's it going to look like if you don't follow through mm -hmm. with those actions? Um, what are those people that you are going to possibly help? What are they going to miss out on? There's a, a question that I just um, came across that I thought was really interesting, and that is, it, it speaks maybe to, is the thing you're pursuing valuable enough, you know, for you, for the other world? Mm -hmm. uh, but the question was, what what's worth doing that you would do even if you knew you were going to fail? Wow. <laughs> so challenging ourselves that sometimes it is our fear of failure that keeps us from from moving forward I don't want to look stupid I don't want to look like an idiot you know how am I going to feel if this doesn't work out mm -hmm. but is it big enough that even if I didn't succeed it's still worth doing and I think that's something that we can think about with our our vision the things that we're envisioning that we want to create is sure. who's it going to impact and what's the difference it's going to be going to make on the world mm -hmm. And I think that's a great point, too, like back to the question is, you know, maybe the way to look at next year is, you know, all of the struggles and everything that we had to put up with or, or try to pivot around this year, we're still here. We're still capable. We're still, you know, able to make choices to help us move forward. And so when you said even though, like if I knew today <laughs> that, you know, 2020 was going to repeat itself, would I challenge myself to still take that opportunity and envision myself being successful? So, no, I think that's an awesome point. So, believe it or not, we are winding down uh, this episode of The Source. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure having you here in the studio with me. I'm so glad you were available. Uh, as we talked a little bit before we came in, I, I you know, from, from my family to yours, I certainly hope you make the most of this uh, unique year, but take time to celebrate with one another and uh, obviously then celebrate the reason for the season. And, and let's just uh, let's go into 2021 with a lot greater vision <laughs> that, uh, you know, our success is going to be something that's going to look way different than what our past has been. So thank you again. 
I appreciate it. Thank all of you for joining us here this afternoon. Uh, as your host, Kurt P. White, this has been an honor for me to do the source for the year 2020. I'm looking forward to next year. Uh, so join me again in January on the fourth Tuesday. And as I always say, if you have not looked into or joined the I've Decided community, it only takes two minutes. All you have to do is go out to the website. It's www.ivedecided.org. Literally two minutes and you can become a member and join our community today. We'd love to have you. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you. And we'll see you next year. Thanks, Kurt. PeoriaLife.com.